yep, the real estate crash is here, but there's a good chance that you're looking for it in all the wrong places. I talk to people every day that are hoping and praying for a real estate crash. They saw what happened back in 2008 and they too want to buy a house at half the price. I could talk until I'm blue in the face about how home prices only went down two out of the last six recessions, but it wouldn't matter because I think sometimes hope overpowers reason. But yeah, right now, real estate prices are down by half. Heck, in a lot of cases, real estate prices are down by more than half. And there are now severe liquidity issues as this issue could cause a lot of regional banks to collapse. Oh, real quick, hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Oh, you haven't heard too much about this, have you? Yeah, that makes sense. It's because this real estate collapse is happening in the commercial real estate market. Ultimately, we have three different types of real estate markets. Some would carve out a fourth and separate commercial and retail, but I'd combine the two market segments. It's like combining single family condos and multifamily properties into the residential market segment. So the three segments are residential, commercial, and industrial. Residential is ultimately the real estate agent segment that is most talked about, but they all have different cycles and are all intertwined with one another. Ultimately, the pain that the commercial market is going through is the gain that the industrial market is now going through as well. We all know what's happening to retail right now, right? Big box stores and malls, they're closing up shop as the consumer has transitioned to online shopping and they've done so fast. It's convenient and I'm gonna say it, it's pretty awesome. But wanna hear something crazy? Industrial takes three square feet of space for every one square foot of space that a retail store uses to sell a particular product. That is why the need for industrial goes through the roof. You think the residential market has seen some crazy appreciation gains in the last five to seven years? Go look at the valuations of these industrial properties. And this need for additional space does make sense. One of the biggest expenses for an online retailer is the customer acquisition. If an online retailer doesn't have a certain item that a customer is asking for because it's out of stock, well, that customer is just gonna move to the next online store. The online retailer just lost the sale as well as possibly a new customer. So how do they combat that? Have a lot more products sitting in the warehouse shelves. Now, the vacancy rate in industrial has ballooned to 5.55%. I'm joking here because 5.55% is insanely low, but it's 3.61% in Q4 of 2022. That's how tight the industrial market is. So the industrial market is booming. The residential market is doing okay for the most part, which leads us to the commercial market and the crash that's going on there. Let's start here. The National Bureau of Economic Research report revealed that 45% of all office loans are underwater. 45%. In other words, they know more than the properties were. But stories like this are all over the country. It's like a constant and consistent drumbeat. Simon Property Group, which is one of the largest mall owners in the country, talk about a really bad place to be, is looking to give up. Just hand over the keys to turn over 1.21 million square foot space rather than pay off the $290 million debt that came due this. Or how about this one? where a Canadian pension fund sold their 29% stake in a New York City office building for $1. Yup, one old dollar. Boston Properties bought the 29% stake, bringing the entire dollar to the closing table. But also, they did have to assume some debt. But nonetheless, that's not a great vote of confidence for New York real estate. Or this 262,000 square foot building that was the former site of FedEx Custom Critical in Green, Ohio selling for $2.4 million or $9 a square foot. By the way, if you're interested in this type of stuff, you should definitely follow this guy on Twitter. Just unbelievable, the stuff that he showed. And how about this one? This 41 story Manhattan office tower that just sold for $173 million less than what it sold for back to 2015. That wasn't that long ago. Or maybe, how about this one? Where these two San Francisco hotels have lost an incredible $1 billion plus in value since 2016. Or this one, where a downtown Los Angeles office tower lost $417 million in value in three years. The appraised value of this 52-story office tower went from $632 million in 2021 $215 million today. Not surprising, the owner is handing the property back to the lender. There's a $465 million loan on it. Or this one. This San Francisco property sold for 40% of its loan balance. 
The property sold for $35 million. It had a $90 million loan balance and was last sold for $113 million in 2017. Honestly, we could do this all day. Like I said, there's a real estate crash. Properties are selling for 50, 60, 70, 80, even 90% of the previous values. It's just not in the market that most people want it to be in, which is kind of screwed up in the way. And we can thank COVID for this. So many companies are diminishing their footprint or moving out of these big cities or allowing people to go local. And it's putting stress on the local commercial real estate market in all of these big cities. And it doesn't look like it's gonna get any better anytime soon. Now look, people's lives, they were ruined when home prices crashed by close to 20% in 2008. And not just a couple people, we're talking about millions upon millions of people here. But people's lives are being ruined with this commercial crash as well. They just don't know it yet. A lot of these entities that are taking these massive losses, they're pension funds. And then they're going to be a select few who are going to make a ton of money. I mean, we're talking an ungodly sum of money because they're buying trophy properties all over the country for pennies on the dollar. In my opinion, the lesson here should be that cheap money, it's like a drug. It makes you feel good for a short period of time. But once you're off it, the world comes crashing down. Now, hopefully our economic planners, the people that believe that there are betters, hopefully they've come to realize this. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs, whether you're looking to buy in Massachusetts or anywhere else in the country, and it would be a true pleasure to help you. I work with really awesome agents all over the country, and I know that they would do a phenomenal job for you, whether you're looking to buy or sell a home. I'm happy to make an introduction to you at no cost to you, of course. You can find all my contact information in the description below, right down there, or you can visit me on youtuberealestateagent.com. Until next time.